Welcome back to part five of this module on functions. In this part, we'll introduce the concept of pointers. In a computer, every piece of data is stored in memory. Memory has both an address and contents. When a variable or value is stored in memory, it is stored in the contents at some memory location, denoted by its address. In C, we access the contents of memory with regular old variables, as we've been doing up to this point. However, you can also access memory addresses using pointers. A pointer is a memory reference that points to a particular memory location or address. Consider the following syntax. With the first declaration, a is a regular integer variable. int star ptr to a is an integer pointer. With this declaration, ptr to a is a pointer that can point to a memory location that stores an integer value. As declared, this is an uninitialized pointer. If we declare a regular integer variable without assigning it a value, its default value is undefined. Similar, this uninitialized pointer doesn't necessarily point to anything valid. It could point to a non-existent memory location, or a memory location that doesn't belong to our program, or it could be filled with a special flag variable to indicate uninitialized memory, such as dead beef. No default value is defined, so it's best practice to initialize pointers immediately. If you know what you want to initialize them to right away, then you can go ahead and do so. Otherwise, you can initialize it to null, which is a special pointer value that indicates nothing. Here's an example of initializing our pointer to null. Pointer variables can also be created for any type of variable. Here are a few more examples. You can also test a pointer variable to see if it's null. In fact, this is a very common error handling operation called a null pointer check. Now that we have pointers, we need to actually make them point to something. We can use the usual assignment operator, but we need to make sure that both sides of the assignment operator match. That is, if there's a pointer on the left-hand side, the right-hand side needs to be a memory address. The referencing operator, the single ampersand, gives us the memory address of a regular variable. Here's our example extended. We make our pointer point to the variable a using the referencing operator ampersand a. The left-hand side is a pointer variable, and the right-hand side is the memory address of a. We would use the same syntax for other types of variables. There are many pitfalls to avoid when working with pointers. The first is that a pointer variable and the thing that it points to need to have the same types. An integer pointer can only point to an integer, and a double pointer can only point to a double. If you mix them up, bad things happen. In this case, we've got a double pointer, and try to force it to point to an integer. This will likely compile and run, but it won't give us the results that we want. The double pointer will be expecting to point to a memory location that holds 8 bytes of data. Since we make it point to a memory location that only holds a 4-byte integer, it will extend past the integer and try to treat it as a double, which is likely going to give us some garbage value. Another pitfall is in assigning a pointer variable to an invalid memory location. On line 3, we assign the value stored in A, that is 42, to the pointer variable. In other words, we make the pointer point to the memory location 42, which may or may not exist, and which almost certainly doesn't belong to our program. In the fourth line, we do something similar but assign it a hard-coded value 10. Pointing a pointer to an invalid memory location will, hopefully, result in a segmentation fault. Attempting to access memory that doesn't belong to our program is an illegal operation and a potential security issue. Imagine if we were able to read any memory location, including those that contain sensitive data of other programs, such as crypto keys or passwords. Good operating systems will detect these kinds of illegal memory accesses and terminate or kill a program for doing so. Once a pointer points to something, we need a way to manipulate the contents stored in that memory location. For this, we use the dereferencing operator, which is a single asterisk, or to use the same terminology as before, a single star. This changes a pointer into a regular variable that we can then manipulate. Here's an example. Dereferencing the pointer on line 4 turns it into a regular variable, giving us access to its contents, in this case 42, so that we can add 10 to it and assign 52 to b. 
You can also modify the contents of a variable via its pointer. Again, you need to dereference it to change it into a regular variable. Then you can assign it a value. To recap, you declare a pointer variable using the star syntax. You get the memory address of a regular variable using the referencing operator. You can turn a pointer variable into a regular variable using the dereferencing operator, which again is the star. Let's take a look at a full demonstration. First, let's create a variable and a pointer and we've initialized it to null. Let's try to print it out. The percent %p is a placeholder value that will format a pointer value. Since it's initialized to null, it has a value of zero. Let's try to dereference it to see what's stored in null. We get a segmentation fault. That's because when we dereference the null pointer, it's an illegal operation. That memory address doesn't exist. So it seg faults on us. Now let's make the pointer point to A. And now that it points to a valid memory address, we can dereference it to see its contents. A is being stored at this memory location. And when we dereference it, we get the contents stored there. Let's run it again. The memory address is slightly different on each and every single run. That's because of the way functions work. Remember that when a program starts, a program stack is created. On each different run, that stack is being created in a different memory location. Thus, the local variable A is being stored at a different memory address on every single run. Let's change the contents of A through its pointer. The change is reflected both in the variable A and in its pointer. Let's create another variable and make our pointer point to it instead. The variable A is stored at this memory location, but apparently the variable B is stored at this memory location. When we dereference it, we get the contents of B instead. Here's a visualization of this phenomenon. We have a pointer stored in a memory location, and initially its contents are null. We also have a variable A stored at a memory location. Initially its contents are 10. Making a pointer point to A means that the contents are actually the memory address of A. Implicitly, it points to that variable and its contents. By dereferencing and resetting the value, we are going from the pointer, jumping to that memory address, and then resetting its contents. So you might be asking yourself, what's the point of a pointer? You can already manipulate regular variables, so why do we need pointers to do it circuitously? The answer is demonstrated in our next video. We want to be able to pass variables to other functions by reference so that those functions can directly manipulate the contents of memory. This is known as pass by reference.